Well, what the heck? Good morning, happy people. Look at that. Look at Pat Magdalano in the house. We came up to Oshkosh to see Sarah's family for Christmas. As soon as I get here, Pat calls me and says he's catching giant bluegills. So yesterday I drive over 200 miles through some of the sketchiest roads you've ever seen in your life. Ice, snow, deer running everywhere, but we're here. Let's, Let's go. This guy is a living success story. And that's actually why I'm here. It is straight up gangster cold out here. I'm not sure if that's an actual term or not, but uh, it's the only thing I can come up with. Dude, look at all the logs. They must have knew I was coming. Uh-oh, what's going on? Y'all having fun today or what? All right, y'all, I was just actually in here this is what I'm talking about. That is the most beautiful thing you can ever see first thing in the morning. You got cheese curds, a keg, and you got Pat Magdalano, yep. the man. Uh, the keg will be later, the coffee the first thing in the morning. <laughs> this is like one of the most awesome little convenience stores I've ever been in. It's the country corner, y'all. Yeah. I've been coming to this store for 28 years. That's awesome. This is stuff we do not have to do in Florida. We typically walk from the tent or cabin to where we're going fishing. Not today, we're taking the tent with us. Sadie, is he crazy? Yes, he is. Man, pulling that sh shack was a lot easier when I was fighting. <laughs> <laughs> what you got there? This is an Eskimo pistol bit. Man, this thing, I just got it. Look how easy this thing cuts. Pretty nice. And then I like to put it in reverse. It shoots all that slush down underneath. You got a clean hole. Is this your first time or something? <laughs> First time this year, but <laughs> usually rice fishing in October, but we've had a late season. <laughs> Little wax worm and <laughs> just like the ocean, right? Yeah, except not quite as much, yeah. What pound test are you using? Like three. Three pound floral. Because if you use too heavy, you get that coil in your line because your jigs are so light, mm -hmm. and that coil, you can't feel nothing. Well, typical fisherman, she's going to walk far away. We walk all the way to the middle, yet she's going to walk to the farthest hole. The last person to catch a fish has to do the dishes. Okay. You gotta do the dishes. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, big crappie. Hey, there you go, bud. What are you doing there? Getting the ice off the guy. My line gets caught on it. If there was any bit of wind, it would feel so much colder. I mean, what perfect weather. Yeah. Cause it's like 10 degrees, but it feels nice. Usually when the bluegill come off the bottom or crappie, you always want to pull it away from them and they'll chase it. You can kind of tell if they're going to bite right away. If they don't chase, you really got to try to finesse them. But usually if I see one, I'll just pull it away. And if they come, I'll just slowly keep going. And usually they'll, they'll hit when you're pulling it away. Like a 
Dang, son, you're working on the Grand Slam. Look at the size of that hog. Yeah. God. That's a, not even really a huge one for here. But I mean, anywhere else in the Midwest, that's a really nice bluegill. What's your limit per day here? I think it's 25. I'm not even sure what the actual, I think it's 25 though. You can't beat them, join them, right? Oh, that's exactly what I would do. I would drill my hole so close it looked like a peanut. <laughs> We have a whole little house over there with a heater in it. And we're sitting out here freezing to death. My hands feel like if I hit them with a hammer, they would just pr crack into a hundred pieces. I only get to ice fish about once every two or three years. But when I do, it's with Pat Magnolano. This guy's awesome. Let's go take a look at his shop. It's called Mag's Custom Rods. He makes the power noodle. How do you keep your desk so organized is what I want to know. It's not organized at all. It's, it's a lot more organized than mine. Yeah, it's it's hard to keep the desk organized. You got other things to do, you know? You know it. All right, so show me around. What do you got here? How do you build these rods? Where does it start? Where does it end? If there's a custom handle, we do it all in here. Any custom work. And then we ream them out fit them to the blank and he glues them right here and we wait the next day and then we put them on racks and then the next day he ties them once the glue is fully cured. This isn't an automated process. Nope. This is a, a process by hand, y'all. Pretty cool. Yeah. Then after the handle's dry, we bring them over here and uh, he, does, he does more of our production tying. And then Alex over there, this is uh, Austin. Uh, nice he's been you. with me the longest. He, He's pretty dang good at tying, and uh, yeah, after that, we tie them there. Then after we're done tying them, he straightens the guides in here, and you put them on, uh, on the lathe here. And we put two coats on, so this is, we put this coat on really thin, and then the second coat is the finished coat. We put that on the next day. So each coat cures for 24 hours. Then after they apply the finish, we put them on these dryers. These are a drum dryer. They're rotating at 6 RPMs. And each, each drum does 16 rods and keeps it nice and even finish. So once they're done in there, he does quality control in there so they don't leave that room until he looks at them, makes sure they're good. And then she does it again in here, checks everything out, makes sure the guides are straight and the finish is good. And then she packs and ships them all. And uh, that's the fine, that's the process. So when you put a real seat on an ice rod, a lot of guys want it super light. And when you put that real seat on there with all full of glue, it actually weighs more than the entire rod. So that rod right there is about 25 grams. So under an ounce and uh, we try to keep them as light as possible. And you don't, real seats on ice rods aren't really necessary unless you're fishing for lake trout, which I have real seats on those. Cool. Right there. This is a 28 inch power noodle. This rod was designed for panfish, smaller jigs, has a light tip with good backbone. So this is our power noodle. This is just, we just got it off the drying rack and let's go fishing. We have done found the honey hole. We're inside the little house. We got the heater going on. I don't know if, uh, we're fogging up in here y'all. We're totally fogging up. Technical difficulty, we'll see in a minute, but I will let you know this. That's a black crappie. That's a bluegill. I want to see the difference. So let's just fillet them real quick. I mean, you guys have only seen me do this about a gazillion times with different fish. That's your bluegill. That's your bluegill. That's your crappie. They look almost identical. I just think the bluegill is a little bit thicker. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. This is a complete shot in the dark, but I'm gonna try to cook out here on the ice. It's snowing like cats and dogs out there. And uh, we stopped by the grocery store on the way here. I was like, let's just get some ingredients. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, we haven't lost anything really. But you know what? You gotta try. Ain't that right, Patty? Yep. Gotta try. And if it turns out good, it's gonna be real good. 
these are red skin potatoes and I'm just gonna cut them into quarters drop them in there it's gonna start smelling good in here pretty quick y'all well, it already does right there's something about being out in the wild and just just winging it man this is called cavenders yeah Take our uh, broccolini, throw it in there. Take an onion. Man, onions are like the best camp food in my opinion. Put them right on top of the potatoes. Oh yes. Your sinuses, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. A little bit of that seasoning on there. Now we're going to put some some mushrooms on top of that. Cover it up. Let, oh. Good thing about falling in the snow, as long as it's not yellow snow. You're able to just pick it right back up. Let's turn this height. Oh, yes. What'd you think about that? Um, it looks amazing. And it smells even better. Mm. Look at this. We got that. Oh, he's fishing. Pat Magdaleno <laughs> can't help it. He's no. been filming. See, he's been filming, but he's like, yeah, just uh, hold this camera and put it right over there. Next thing you know. We got a break in the action. <laughs> It's going, I mean, none of this is good. It's about prime time. Yeah, this is December 23rd. Oh, look at it. Dude, down. catch him. Big old fat mark down there. See him? Woo. Oh, hello, we're nice and comfy. Ah, it's snowing, it's a blizzard. Excuse me while I... Oh, it's gonna be good. Look at this. Are you kidding me? Will you catch a fish already? Man, I blew it. Come Man. on, get your fishing pole fish right here. And I think we should definitely bring this with us on future fishing trips now. Now I know that it works. I think <laughs> it's been sitting in storage for 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> so I love just doing whatever. Now look, look, we're inside. What do you call this thing? An ice shack. And I, we're in an ice shack, folks. It's not terminology you learn in Florida, but check it out. Look outside. Look at that. It's a freaking blizzard. <laughs> Hold on. What does that say? Beach? Bear? Bear plus cat. It's a heart. <laughs> oh, aren't you sweet? <laughs> on the cutting board out there. Aren't you going to drive home with this? <laughs> yeah. Uh. I... This is this is terrible, y'all. You thought last night was bad. <sighs> oh man, that smells good. You got one come up on the short teaser? Yeah. Hey, hey, everybody, look, we're we're FaceTiming Brito Mascarande here. Maybe he's the good luck charm. There's Patty. See, I came prepared, y'all. Oh, my potatoes and everything are perfect. This is some camp food right here, y'all. We're just gonna let that finish up. And then I'm gonna take our broccolini and I'm gonna put it right on top. That's going to stay warm. That's going to lock in all your flavor. It's going to percolate down. And you know what? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Here we go. No. Oh, yeah. No, you don't. 
Oh, finally. Oh, nice. Oh, oh it's a crappie. Oh, small one. Felt good. Feels feels good to get a bite. Right? Let me see what you got there. Oh, pretty fish. He's a little small though. Yeah. Huh? But there's more down there right now. Living, y'all. Living. And I wish you were here living with us. There's another one coming up. Oh, the screen's lit up. Another one? Yeah, this one's better. Well, maybe not. It felt better for me. Oh, yeah. A little bit better. A little bit better. But you know what? Look at the screen, y'all. Yeah. I'm guessing Sadie's just spectating today. I'm not Pretty sure. Pretty much. That's what it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We got the fillet of fish. He's getting all fired up over there. They're there. Mm. Shut that one. This one's done. Now we'll take our fillets. What are you doing there, Sadie? Making her glow. We're all about cleanliness and etiquette. Here, deer meat for dinner. <laughs> watch how this. Watch how this is going to come together. Okay, broccolini. Now we're going to get some onions and potatoes. It's it's fogging my glasses up. I can't see anything. Better get me a spoon. I don't even know what I'm putting where. I can't see anything. My glasses are like <laughs> totally fogged. Not like that. Here's our fish. Now I did not cut the pen bones out of this, so just be aware of that. Look at that, y'all. That's for Thank you. Thank you. Um, we got forks around here somewhere. You gotta have that fine china. Maggie. Oh, man. Thank you. There you go. We normally film with the big camera, but it's just... What you... I want to see what you think. Mm. Broccolini's good. Mmm. <laughs> so good. Look at that fish, though. Mmm. The fish is really good. Thank you so much.
You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. Mm. My honor. Man, that fish is so good. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, that's a good one, wherever that is. This is it. <laughs> We're eating and he's fighting fish. Oh, that's a nice one. Wherever that is. That's yeah, bluegill. I can tell you it's a bluegill. Ooh. Yeah, boy. Look at that. That's what we just ate. Yeah. She's still got her plate yeah. in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's super cool to me that we just caught this fish. And what's even more cool to me is the story of Pat Magdalano and how he started Mag's Custom Rods. There's so much to it, we cannot possibly tell you the whole story here. But what we're going to do, I'm going to do a podcast with Pat, where we just sit down and talk about where you came from and how this all happened, because I guarantee you it's a story that will blow your mind. He came from the highest highs, winning state championships, one after the other, to the lowest of lows. Mm -hmm. And now... He's a icon in his town, building a business where no one thought possible. For that, bro, cheers, my man. Thank you, man. Hey, I wish y'all nothing but the best in this entire world. I, I'm not here for these fish. I'm here for y'all. Yeah. And, uh, folks, this is what life is all about. We're just kicked back, having fun in the middle of a blizzard. And I appreciate y'all being a part of it. Take care. God bless. And guess what? We are gone.